Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about the best beauty releases of 2023 so far. And for today's video, we will be focusing on new releases, not just my favorites of the year, but just the best new releases because shockingly, we are in fact halfway through the year. But before we go any further, let's take a second to grab our iced coffee or hot coffee Let's take a sip and let's get started. Now, I have done this style of video before in the past, but last year I was on vacation in June and I forgot to do it, oops. So what I will do is I will go brand by brand and just talk about those new releases. And the first category here is Chanel. And we have some new lipsticks here in the Rouge Allure Velvet series, some new shades. And these, I believe, kind of snuck in at the end of December, but we're going to include them in today's video anyway. And these are the Rouge Allure Velvet in number 45, Intense. I love these. I love these when they came out and I'm still really enjoying them. I got three shades, but there were two that really stood out. This is 45, Intense, and 46, Magnetic or Magnetic is what I'm wearing today. I just love how vibrant, how colorful, how punchy these are. I do find that color can be very invigorating it can be energizing and it's just really beautiful and so i went with 45 and 46 they do look close ish to each other but there is a little bit of nuance i find that 46 has a bit more raspberry to it and 45 is just a bit more barbie pink and sometimes you just need that infusion just that hit of color on your lips especially when you want a more neutral rest of the face it's nice to just have that little pop of color in my opinion the best release from chanel so far was the le blanc collection which we received a lot of confusion about it was uh it came out here in canada in montreal in like february i think and then the u.s got it in like may listen i don't know i'm not in charge okay uh and but for me the le blanc collection was the best it's the collection that i picked up the most items from the le blanc comes out every year and this year it was just really stunning i got one of the bon essentiel in the shade lila means lilac and i am wearing it today it looks like a purple glossy highlighting stick i layered it underneath my blush it's very beautiful very subtle it does have a lilac in it but you know it's not too stark so it's not going to give you like a weird gray purple cast it's just a very interesting touch it fit with the le blanc more ethereal pinky purple look it was very gorgeous and one item here that was like the absolute cherry on top of the gorgeous sunday was the blush it's the blush that i'm wearing today it's really the quintessential chanel blush where it's just the packaging is exquisite and then the color itself is a beautiful highlighting blush illuminating blush where it's giving you illumination but not too much this is what my compact looks like here. This is Le Fantasy de, Fantasy de Chanel, so the Chanel Fantasy. Uh, yes, it had an interlocking CC logo. I have been digging and swirling and scraping my palette here because it's just so pretty. It's described as like a pearlescent fuchsia, and I think it's a pretty good description. It's fuchsia, but it's not, you know, too flashy. This is what it looks like here. Obviously swatched, it looks more intense. It almost looks more frosted, but on the cheek, this is what it looks like. It's just a beautiful pink harmony with a highlighter mixed in. So you can use it on its own. You can mix it in with another highlighter like I did. It's not too much. It's not tacky. It's not a chunky glitter. And like I said, this is exactly the quintessential beautiful Chanel blush that mixes color and illumination and gives you an exquisite packaging. But if you're like me and you buy your makeup to use, take your photos and your videos when you first get the product fresh. And then after that, just dig in and enjoy. Next up is number 68, Les Délices de Chanel. This was the eyeshadow palette that came with the Le Blanc this year. This is giving pink purple, 
pastel fantasy. It does look like all the colors you would want for an Easter egg, I admit, but it's really pretty. I love the palette except for uh, this color here. This weird one, this is definitely misplaced. It's a warm red, of course, a warm red brown. Honestly, I don't think it belongs here at all. I think they should have replaced that one color with a more intense purple and I did do that in several videos. I did lots of tutorials with this whole release and mixing and matching and I often, I almost always skipped that color but I still love the palette. I think it's very pretty. I think it's just incredibly on point for Le Blanc. It's, it's exactly what I wanted and like I stated, this was so far the release that I've enjoyed the most. And today, all I'm wearing on my eyes is I'm wearing a little bit of bronzer in the crease that I'll show you in a moment. And then this pastel yellow here, just in the inner, inner corner like this and on the bra bone. Very light, very easy breezy, beautiful, just a very beautiful eye look. And I think it suits the bold lip very well. Moving on to a blush that I should have included at the beginning before Chanel. This is Armani. I thought it was Giorgio Armani Beauty, but no, no, it's just Armani Beauty. And this is the Luminous Silk Blush in the shade number 10. This is a new blush series. And this one in particular is really your cheek, but better in a soft, luminous, peachy nude way. I don't know how much this picks up here on camera, but I have worn it several times on my channel here and it's always very beautiful. I love that it's part of the Luminous Silk series. So it really is in the name Luminous Silk. It's not a chunky glitter. It's less um, sparkly, less glittery, less highlighter than the Chanel blush. You can sort of see here compared side by side. The Armani one is much more subtle much more velvety it's not as not as much highlighter but you do get that beautiful luminous finish and number 10 is a gorgeous shade it's really like if a a bronzer and a blush had a baby and it was just your cheek but a little bit peachy it's really pretty if you like very natural very soft makeup if you are a little bit apprehensive of you know blushes that i'm wearing today if you want something more subtle get this one here. I think you're, you're really going to love it. And I think there's been some issues getting number shade number 10, but I was able to uh, provide affiliate link. So everything that I listed below, hopefully some of these may be long gone by now, but the ones that are still available will have affiliate links down below. Last but not least from Chanel so far is this mystery product that confused a lot of people. This is the Healthy Glow Cream in Rosy Beige. This is a new product from the Le Beige series this year, and a lot of people thought maybe this was a bronzer because it came out in the same travel format as the travel size bronzers, but this is really a multi-use product. I often use it as a primer. So I use a big kabuki brush and then I just buff it all over, all over the face. It blurs instantly. It just gives like a beautiful sheer veil. And then because it's a rosy color, you can tap a little bit for color correcting, just a little bit. And you can also highlight. You can just use it to carve underneath the cheekbones. It's a wonderful travel friendly, multi-use product for me. I think it's number one usage for me is a beautiful blurring primer. And then the rest of my complexion is evened out so I don't have to wear foundation. It's a great product. I really love it. Since I've purchased it, it's been basically used every single day. It's really indispensable. And some of you told me that this was available at certain retailers in person. I think it's also one of those items that's been hard to find in the US for reasons I really don't know. Moving on to Dior. Now, they snuck in some new products at the end of 2022, same like Chanel did. And these are a reformulation, which has been the word of the day for the entire brand of Dior this year. And these are the Addict Maximizers, Dior Addict Lip Maximizers. These are plumping lip glosses. I picked up a couple of shades, but there are two colors in particular that I've used the most. My absolute favorite so far has been 004 Coral. It looks like a beautiful pastel creamsicle shade. It's amazing for summer. If you get the slightest hint of a tan, this is a gorgeous shade and the color is buildable. You can just get a little swatch like this or you can go ahead and just keep adding more color. 
it's a gloss so it, it offers a nice glossy finish and it has a little bit of a plumping action as well and then I have this shade number 006 berry which is just another great color you know I wanted some different shades different options here for different moods and I just think that these are really two pretty colors but um, this coral color especially for summer or just warmer months I think is super super pretty and then I think so far my favorite release from Dior has been their summer collection Eden Rock inspired by the Mediterranean by luxury hotel Eden Rock this palette here is my favorite it's a five shadow palette and I have to reiterate that this is in fact a neutral natural leaning palette with a single pop of blue which I think is probably the best for summer because you can use this every day you can use this for travel very easily all you do is you lean into the first four more neutral natural colors very easily you have some browns a little bit of copper very easy everyday colors and then when you want something more fun and vibrant you can go into the blue and the blue is a little bit more vibrant you know it has a soft satin finish it's not totally matte it's a wonderful color so yeah for summer i think this this is really really wonderful i've used it a lot and then my favorite nail polish I think so far of the year not only from Dior but just in general is this nail polish here called Jasmine 007 this is also from their summer release their wand applicator is magnificent it's nice and wide so you really can just do one swipe and just get the whole nail covered this is a super opaque white it's wonderful it's not streaky it's gorgeous and it lasts almost two weeks I'm not joking, like a solid week and a half of wear. I'm really, really impressed with this nail polish. I picked up a blue as well. I like the blue, but the nail polish, the white one, I, I think I wore it for a month straight and I just had to change it like twice, maybe three times. Like it's, it's crazy how good this is. I love a white manicure, white pedicure for summer. I just think it's so fresh. I also just think it's so classic and classy. And the fact that it's so long wearing, is a win-win moving on to a concealer and that's the concealer that i'm wearing today this is from givenchy this is part of the prism libre skin caring collection they have a luminous foundation a matte foundation they have the prism libre loose powders and now they have a concealer and i have the shade c305 this is what it looks like here this is the applicator wand it's pretty big so this can be a concealer and a corrector I've done a full review a side-by-side -side comparison and I compared this to the uh, Chanel sublimage concealer which is I think my favorite concealer of all time possibly but this one here from Givenchy actually gives it a pretty good run for its money it's incredibly hydrating incredibly long wearing, uh, absolutely zero creasing, zero bunching, zero moving. Once you blend it out, it's there for the day, which is the standard for all luxury concealers. And it's great, it has an amazing shade range. It's a, a wonderful product. It does dry down a lot faster than a lot of my other concealers, but it's just, it's great. I mean, I like the shade C305. It has a little bit of rosiness to it, so it, it covers, like it cuts a little bit of blue undertones. It's a great concealer. I love it. Moving on to Guerlain, we have their summer release. This is their summer jean collection, which came out springtime, but for summer, I absolutely love this i think that they absolutely nailed this out of the park with their packaging it's bumblebees with denim and flowers and a garden and it's you know it's very evocative of summer it's also evocative of the shades inside like i stated i'm a fan of blue eyeshadow so this one here I am a huge fan of. I think it was perfect to come out in the spring because some of the more pastel colors definitely resonated resonated with me for spring. I loved combining the blue and the purple for a nice blurple color. And you can see the comparison here of the two blues from Dior and Guerlain. I would say that Guerlain 
is a bit more of a classic indigo blue, whereas Dior almost had a little bit more violet in it. But for me, it was this shade here, this purple that turned into a blurple when mixed together. I think the gold is gorgeous, and I like that there's a nice neutral mixed in with this blue palette here. I do think of this Guerlain palette as being a blue palette most of all. It's very colorful. Yes, there is that neutral, more brownie color, but it's more of a, of a vibrant palette than Dior. I love it. I think it's great. It was excellent timing. And then I also got a lipstick case and a lipstick. This is also a summer jean. I love the packaging. It's quilted. It's, you know, it's not just like an overlay. You can feel the fabric. It's absolutely exquisite. And the shade here is not new. I'm cheating. The shade here is number 360. I think it's a milky beige, I think it was called. I just wanted a beautiful nude. This is what it looks like in the tube here. And this is it here on the back of my hand. It's a beautiful pinky beige nude. I do think that Guernet has some of the best matte velvet lipstick formulas out there. I do think that they're very underrated. Their matte bullet lipstick will last hours, several hours eating, drinking, living life. It just lasts so, so long. And it's also incredibly comfortable. Like some matte lipsticks, you can feel it. These ones here, you really cannot. And I'm excited to see more colors from them because I have a lot of reds, but I'm excited to see some nudes and more neutral colors because they are just really, really fabulous. And last but not least, I have a new favorite bronzer here, and this is from Hermes. This is new from them. This came out this year, maybe a month ago, maybe two months ago. This is the Hermes Plein Air. H Trio bronzing powder and I have the shade 02 Atlas. So if you look closely, you can see that the H is in fact still intact. I think that this is not just an overlay. All the design goes all the way down into the palette, which I'm excited about because I am a swirler, I'm a digger. I'm just gonna scratch my brush around to get everything that I want and I'm wearing this today. I'm wearing it, you know, just like in the three shape and then a little bit on my nose, a little bit in the crease here. This is what it looks like as a swatch concentrated on the back of my hand. It has a nice soft matte finish. It doesn't have any sort of shimmer or a glitter to it. It looks luminous, like it doesn't look like a cakey dry matte, but it also doesn't have any shimmer to it. I think it's gorgeous. I think it's wonderful. It's pricey, of course it is, it's Hermes. It also has a lovely floral scent that their blushes and their bronzers have. Really pretty, very happy I have it. I love the packaging, I love the white and the gold. And again, I'm wearing the shade 02 Atlas. So that is it for the best new luxury beauty of 2023 so far. Every year at the end of the year, I do a huge roundup of like the best luxury of the entire year and it's not only new it's like everything that i've been in love with for the whole year but i thought it'd be fun to do like a retrospective of the past few months and just see what's stood out to me the most and i think what stood out to me the most was, was the chanel Le Blanc, the dior eden rock and the guerlain summer jean those three collections are the ones that i bought the most of and used the most of and then there's like a little bit of pick and mix here and there but yeah I would love to hear from you down in the comments. What do you think? What were some of your favorites of the year so far? What do you think of my picks here? And let me know if you want to see some makeup tutorials using the best luxury beauty of 2023 so far. I'm sure you do. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys for today. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a beautiful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.